Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is The Last Hodler and as you probably know from one of my previous videos and if you've been keeping up with um, all the stuff I've been talking about with altcoins that I am one of the lead blockchain developers for the UK's leading blockchain company called Online Blockchain. And today I'm going to talk to you about something um, that's really important that you should be doing if you have um, cryptocurrencies stored on any of your machines. Um, this is something you're going to really need to know how to do um, to stay secure and make sure that um, the the cryptocurrency wallets you have um, don't have malware in them and um, are as safe as possible. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be um, installing uh, Bitcoin Core from source on Linux, okay? Um, so what that involves is pulling the repository from GitHub, the official Bitcoin source code repository, and building that um, with a couple of tools that we have native on Linux, all right? Um, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to download something called, well, you're either going to have Linux already on your machine, uh, but it's likely that you don't have Linux already, so you're going to want to download something called VirtualBox. All right, and I'll leave a link to, to VirtualBox in the description, as well as Ubuntu, which is the version of Linux that we're going to be using to install Bitcoin Core. All right, so once um, you've done that, and there's a million tutorials on how to install VirtualBox, um, so I'm not going to go into that on this video. If, if people comment and, and struggle with, with that, I'll, I will make a video on that to help you, but um, it's pretty straightforward, so you you shouldn't find that too difficult, I wouldn't think. All right, so once you've got VirtualBox installed um, and you have uh, Linux open, okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to the official um, Bitcoin GitHub and, and bring up the Unix build notes, okay? Um, so it's github.com slash Bitcoin slash Bitcoin slash Bob blob master doc build Unix MD. But if you just um, go into the description, I'll leave a link to the build notes there as well. All right, so let's get started. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring up a terminal. Um, and the way to do that is to click Control-Alt-T. Um, and then you've got your terminal and we're going to be installing everything um, manually from source from the Unix build notes. All right, so there's a few different commands um, and, dis and dependencies um, that we're going to be installing here so that the Bitcoin source code can compile. Because the thing with Bitcoin is it is a... Um, it is a grouping of many um, already pre-established libraries and code that's already been written. Since Bitcoin is an open source project, um, it's it's been added to by many different contributors around the world, um, and they've pulled in many other little projects that help the Bitcoin um, source code uh, be a complete project and. Um, all the, all the dependencies and libraries that it uses um, in its core functionality are pre-existing, pre-tested, um, verified softwares, and people know about the exploits, they know about the bugs. Um, so if you're building everything from scratch, from the ground up, you don't have the same assurances as if you're using those external libraries from pre-existing um, you know, track record proved technologies, all right? So there are quite a few um, of those that we're gonna have to install the dependencies for. And I'll go into detail a little bit about um, what each of them are and why we need them, why they're important, okay? So once you're in the um, in the build notes, um, the first thing we need to do is we need to go down to the Ubuntu section, okay? Because in the um, in the build notes, there's actually a few different um, operating system versions um, that Bitcoin Core supports and that you can build it on. But the one that we're looking at today is going to be Ubuntu. All right. So once we're here in Ubuntu, we're going to have to start um, putting these commands in, and that's going to be installing the dependencies that we need to build Bitcoin from source. All right. So the first um, the first First one, which is this one here, and I'll, I'll link in order in the description all of the different commands, just so that you have you can copy paste them right in. There won't be too many troubles. All right. So the first one here um, is going to be the portable libraries, so that Linux knows how to uh, compile stuff properly. All right. So that's basically what libtool is. Right. So let's copy paste that one. That's going to be the first one that we install. Now I've already installed everything, um, just kind of like as a practice run, just to make sure everything goes smoothly. So when I, um, you know, when I click enter here and put in my password, it's going to install really quickly and say that it's already done. But for you, it, will, it might take a little bit of time. So um, don't panic if it takes a little bit of time. So that's the first one we need to do. Um, and the next one is to install all the, um, the the common software properties here. And we're also going to be adding some, um, some security keys, um, update um, our Linux version to the most um, up-to-date version. Um, and then we're going to be installing something called Berkeley Database. So copy all of these commands one after the other. Um, they will be the next ones to do. So I'm just going to go through each one of these individually.
Okay, now I'm going to update my Linux version to the most um, current update. So the next command here is going to install something called Berkeley Database. And what Berkeley Database is, is basically um, a super high performance library um, for dealing with database stuff. Okay, so that's Berkeley Database. And then the next one we're going to be um, installing is something called UPNP. All right, and what UPNP is, it stands for some, it stands for Universal Plug and Play. So it's basically a middleware that many different devices can use to all be part of the network at the same time. It, it, it bridges the gap between different um, hardware and different software, so that everything, it, it, every everybody's on the same playing field when they're joined the network. Okay, so that's um, UPNP. So that's the next one. Okay, so the next one we're going to install is something called ZMQ. And what ZMQ is, is it's an open source library for high performance asynchronous messaging. Okay, because on the Bitcoin network, you're going to have data coming in all the time. There's going to be people that have found blocks and they want to broadcast that to the network. Um, and that's asynchronous. What asynchronous means is you, um, it's, not, uh, it's not straightforward in a line, one thing after another. Okay, you don't know when you're going to get a broadcast from the network. You're not sure when you're going to have to broadcast to the network yourself. So we're going to need something to do those asynchronous um, calls. So that's the next one. Did I put that one in already? Yes, I did. Okay, so the next one that we're going to be installing is something called Qt. And what Qt is, is a way that we can have a graphical user interface for the Bitcoin uh, core wallet. Okay, um, there is a command line wallet where you have to type everything in um, if you want to do something, but Bitcoin Core also supports Qt, which is a graphical user interface version. Okay, so we're going to be doing that as well. So that's the next one. All right, that's the next one. And then the final one that we're going to be installing, the final dependency we're going to be installing, is something called QR Encode. And it's a very simple library for generating QR codes. And when you, um, when you request a payment in Bitcoin, you can generate a QR code that someone can scan and they can get your, um, your receive address and the amount of coins you're requesting and things like that. So it's just an added little um, extra bit of functionality. And you can see um, that in the build notes, it's like an optional library because you don't need it, but it's um, nice little useful, a nice little useful thing. All right. So the next thing we're going to be um, writing in the terminal here um, are two commands. Okay. We have a command called autogen and a command called configure. All right, and they are files within the Bitcoin source code um, that basically set up the conditions for compilation depending on what your system has. Okay, so before we do that, we're going to have to clone the Bitcoin repository. We're going to have to pull the Bitcoin repository from GitHub onto our machine, go inside it, and then run these commands. Okay, so the command to pull from a repository is called clone. You're cloning um, the files from the repository. So you would have to type in git because we're using a program called git right github git um, so git clone and then the website like the web address of that repository so that would be um, it's https right github.com slash bitcoin slash bitcoin okay so that would be the next command for you um, I've already got it, destination path Bitcoin already exists, because I did a practice run, so I don't need to clone it again. But once you've cloned it, um, the next thing you'll need to type in is CD, that means change directory, okay? And we're gonna change into the Bitcoin file, all right? So now you can see if I type LS, which means list, I think it means list subdirectories. Um, it basically just lists everything in the in the folder that you're in, all right? You can see now that I'm inside Bitcoin and we have all this stuff in here. So what we're gonna need to do now is we're gonna have to run, um, the autogen file, right? Sudo means run um, with root permissions. SH means run an SH file, a bash file, and it's it's autogen.sh. So it's a bash file called autogen. So that will run that. And we're going to do one more thing. We're going to run the configure file, all right? So dot slash, that's a way to run. Um, and we're going to run just dot slash configure, all right? So we're, we're running the autogen file, all right? And then we're running the configure file, all right? So something interesting to know about these build notes here is that 
Um, for a lot of altcoins that are Bitcoin forks, the actual dependencies that you need to compile the wallet from source are going to be exactly the same. Unless that altcoin has done something weird and wonderful and pulled in um, you know, some other functionalities from some other areas. Generally speaking, um, for a lot of Bitcoin forks, these um, steps for compilation uh, will be exactly the same. So if you're interested in trying a new altcoin, getting a new wallet and compiling it from source, um, I would suggest um, trying uh, to compile it from source using these build steps. And if that doesn't work, then, then going off in other directions. But generally speaking, speaking, um, these build um, instructions will work for a lot of different altcoins. Okay, so now that we've <clears throat> now that we've um, set up the initial conditions for compilation, all we have to do now is actually compile the Bitcoin source code. So we're going to do that from root again. So sudo, right, uh, make, right, and that will make it and then install will install it onto our system. Okay. Um, and now we just have to wait. And th this will take, this could take an hour. It'll take a, a long time. For me, I've already done it, but um, um, so it took a few seconds. But if this is the first time you're, um, you're making uh, the Bitcoin core uh, from scratch, it might take a little bit of time. And now after that, um, now that we've installed um, Bitcoin core, to run Bitcoin core, we just need to type in Bitcoin dash QT, because this is the QT wallet, right? It's the GUI wallet. Um, so now we've got it and, and we can click OK and we can run it and we'll start um, downloading the uh, blockchain. So I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want the Bitcoin blockchain on my virtual box. And that is how you um, install Bitcoin Core from source. Now we have a few other uh, things as well that we've installed when we um, installed the Bitcoin source code here and compiled it here. And um, we also have something called Bitcoin D which is the daemon, it's like a version of Bitcoin Core without the uh, graphical user interface, right? And if you run Bitcoin D, um, it's gonna do all the same stuff that Bitcoin Qt was doing, like download the blockchain and things like that. But then after that, we can open up another terminal, type in Bitcoin C CLI like this, and anything after that will be a, a command line, um, a command line, a process. What's the word? I don't know. It's, it's, it's whatever you want to do with, with Bitcoin, you can do it through the command line. If you type in Bitcoin CLI and then whatever you need to do. So like get a new address or send funds. Um, those, those are the two kind of avenues of interfacing with uh, Bitcoin Core. You can either use the QT or you can use um, Bitcoin D, the daemon, and then the command line interface. That's what CLI stands for, command line interface. So that has been how to install Bitcoin Core from source. I hope you really enjoyed it. And please make sure you subscribe if you want to learn anything at all about altcoins and cryptocurrencies. This is going to be the channel for you if you're making your own cryptocurrencies from scratch, if you're learning about cryptocurrencies, if you're going to invest in cryptocurrencies, I'm going to give you some really good information, some things that you need to know that you're not going to find on any other channels. So please make sure you subscribe. And as always, guys, remember to hodl for as long as possible.